The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a dynamic, fast-growing, international revival movement within Islam. Founded in 1889, it spans more than 195 countries, with membership exceeding tens of millions. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the only Islamic organization to believe that the long-awaited Messiah has come in the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, India. Ahmad claimed to be the metaphorical second coming of Jesus of Nazareth and the divine guide whose advent was foretold by the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad on whom be peace. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community believes that God sent Ahmad, like Jesus, to end religious wars, condemn bloodshed, and reinstitute morality, justice, and peace. Ahmad's advent has brought about an unprecedented era of Islamic revival. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the leading Islamic organization to categorically reject terrorism in any form. More than a century ago, Ahmad emphatically declared that the doctrine of violent jihad goes against the teachings of the Holy Quran and the practice of Muhammad. Instead, Ahmad's advent as Messiah ushered in a new era of tolerance, dialogue, and prayers. To that end, he penned more than 80 books and thousands of letters, delivered countless lectures, and engaged in public debates and prayer duels in an intellectual and spiritual campaign to defend the honor of Islam. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the foremost Islamic organization with the central spiritual leader. Over a century ago, Ahmad reminded his followers of God's promise to safeguard the message of Islam through Khilafat, the spiritual institution of successorship to prophethood. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community believes that only spiritual successorship can uphold the true values of Islam and unite humanity. Five spiritual leaders have succeeded Ahmad since his demise in 1908. The fifth and current spiritual head, His Holiness Mirza Masrur Ahmad, resides in the United Kingdom. Under the leadership of its spiritual successors, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has now built more than 15,000 mosques, more than 500 schools, and more than 30 hospitals. It has translated the Holy Quran into more than 60 languages. It propagates the true teachings of Islam and the message of peace and tolerance through a 24-hour satellite television channel, MTA, the internet, alislam.org, and print Islam International Publications. It has been at the forefront of disaster relief in the United States and worldwide through an independent charitable organization, Humanity First. This year, by the grace of Allah, the message of the real, true Islam, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, has reached the highest echelons of the world's political institutions. The voice of our Imam, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V, Ayyadahallahu Ta'ala bin Asri al Aziz, has risen above the din of constant commentary and noise to provide the only consistent message of peace and justice for all. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V is expounding the duty of Ahmadi Muslims to bring mankind closer to God and to make the people of the world aware of their duty to safeguard each other's rights. At a time when so many voices despair and blame each other for the upsurge of global violence and discontent, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed is the lone voice bringing God and his message to every corner of the world. Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih's message is gaining attention all around the world, 
as he is the only leader, political or religious, calling for a collective effort towards peace and justice. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V steps forward at any and every opportunity to engage the public, politicians and media in this extremely worthwhile cause. There have been numerous question and answer sessions as well as press opportunities in the past year where Hazrat Khalifa al Masih has demystified Islam and presented simple and clear solutions to problems faced by nations and individuals. And now Hazrat Khalifa al Masih V's voice is resonating in the European Parliament. After another historic address to political leaders, non-governmental organizations and media outlets. Hazrat Mirza Masood Ahmed was the guest of honor at a reception dinner on the evening of the 3rd of December, which was also attended by MEPs, foreign diplomats and NGOs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. All distinguished guests, peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this event who have given me the opportunity to, all, to, to speak all of you here at the European Parliament. I would like also to thank all of the delegates representing different countries and other guests who have gone to great effort to come and attend this. As a community, we constantly, constantly draw the attention of the world towards the establishment of peace and security. And certainly, we make full efforts within our resources towards achieving these goals. As the head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, I regularly speak about such matters whenever the opportunity arises. The state of town or city affects the peace of the entire country and ultimately the state of a nation affects the peace and harmony of the region or the entire world. We are all aware that and accept that today's world has become like a global village. We are all connected through various means, whether it be through the modern modes of transport, whether it be through the media and internet or through various other means. Now, all of these factors have resulted in the nations of the world becoming closer together than ever before. We find that in major countries, people of all races, religions and nationalities have settled and are living together. Indeed, in many countries, there is a significant population of foreign immigrants. The immigrants have become so well embedded that it would be extremely difficult or even impossible for governments or the local people to remove them now. Another key principle Islam teaches is that in an effort to develop peace, it is necessary for all parties to never display any form of pride or arrogance. This was perfectly illustrated by the Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, when he famously said, a black person is not superior to a white person, and nor is a white person superior to a black person. Neither is a European greater or superior to any other national nor are Africans, Asians, or people of any other part of the world. Differences of nationality, color, or ethnicity act merely as a form of identity and recognition. The truth is that in the modern world, 
we all depend <coughs> upon one another. Today, even the major powers like Europe or the United States cannot survive by remaining completely isolated from all others. African countries cannot remain isolated and hope to flourish, and neither can Asian countries or the people from any other part of the world. On June 27, 2012, a historic event occurred in Washington, D.C. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi V, may Allah strengthen his hand, met with leading congressmen and senators and other leaders at Capitol Hill. The meeting, the first of its kind, gave an opportunity to some of the most influential leaders in the United States to hear firsthand Islam's message on world peace. The truth is that peace and justice are inseparable. You cannot have one without the other. And certainly, this principle is something that all wise and intelligent people understand. No one can ever claim that in any society, country, or even the entire world, there can be disorder or a lack of peace where justice and fair dealing exists. However, today we find that there is division and separation between powerful and weaker nations. For example, in the United Nations, we find that there is a distinction made between certain countries. Thus, in the Security Council, there are some permanent members and some non-permanent members. This division has proved to be an internal source of anxiety and frustration, and thus we regularly hear reports of certain countries protesting against this inequality. Islam teaches absolute justice and equality in all matters, and so we find another very crucial guideline in chapter 5, verse 3 of the Holy Quran. In this verse, it states, that to fully comply with the requirements of justice, it is necessary to treat even those people who go beyond all limits in their hatred and enmity with fairness and equity. And the Quran teaches that when, wherever and whoever counsels you towards goodness and virtue, you should accept it. And wherever and whoever counsels you towards sinful or unjust behavior, you should reject it. Premier, all the distinguished guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all. A few days ago, at a function, also held here in Canada, I said that it is the Canadian people who have always taken the first step in developing relations with me. And this is a true picture of the high moral values of its people. Certainly, the world today stands in great need of such values. Only through fulfilling each other's rights can our local environment, our society, our cities, our provinces, and our nations come to be a true paradise on the earth. In every act and at all times, a person must display truth and honesty. A person who departs from honesty does not have complete faith because it proves that his faith lies not with God but elsewhere. The standards of truth given by Islam are that your every word should be straightforward and accurate. It is only through the right word 
that confidence and trust can develop. And it is trust that is a means for guaranteeing peace. If this golden principle is followed at every level, then a spirit of peace and harmony will spread throughout all of society, from our domestic family units to the wider world, and indeed in terms of the relations between nations. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community thanks all of its neighbors and friends for their support over the past decades. We hope and pray that we can continue to work together to build a brighter future for our country. We firmly believe that our community's motto, love for all, hatred for none, will help us achieve that goal. We close with the words of His Holiness, Mirza Masrur Ahmad. You know your Creator when you love His creation. If everyone remembers and practices this teaching, there will not be any enmity in anyone's heart. That is how you create peace in the world.